please let me know if the screen is visible to everyone. All right, thank you. So today we'll be uh, designing the living room step by step. So as you can see here, there are a variety of elements that are used in creating a living room, such as the, especially the wall paneling elements like the sofa, center table, TV units, etc. And even fall ceiling and tiling make a huge component of creating the living room design. Also, more often than not, you will be seeing that living rooms are not a singular enclosed rooms, right? You will also be seeing that it is more or less a part of a dining room or it is a combination of the two. So you can see there is no particular wall in between them, right? So there are room divisions that have been created. So today I'll be taking you through how to make a space like this, especially ones that require semi walls or no walls. And I'll be taking you through the types of furniture that is required. So let's start with creating the room from scratch. So just open this, open one such design. We click on start new design here in our design dashboard. And it'll be better to like start with a new room. Instead of creating directly from scratch, you can select the room option over here. This is a template that you can use. And later you can make changes to it. And once you're done, for now, I'll just be deleting the lights here and the compass. Right. And then we'll just go to the ground floor view here. And this we can actually change to. We can actually change the uh, room type here. So if you click inside the room, you'll open the room properties here. The name you can change to living room. And you can even change the type to living room so that when you are putting furniture, whatever you get will be narrowed down to those types of furniture. So this I'll be showing you later on. So for now, we'll be focusing only on the living room part. So one thing we should do is uh, let's delete this door and this window we can keep for now. So we'll be resizing this room first. So what we basically do is that in this particular case, the living room is around, uh, it's around 4,000 meters, no, 4,000 mm, 4 meters into, let's say here, this is 7,000 mm, 7 meters. So we'll just be doing the same here. A very easy way to be changing the room dimensions here is if you click in, in on one of the walls, you'll see the dimension here. So you can keep this dimension to be as is, or you can just put in a new dimension. And same here, you can type in the length dimension that you want. So this is a very easy way to change your room dimensions. Right, so now what we have here is this living room has been created. And when you go to your room segment here and go to your 3D, you'll be seeing the same space in the 3D form. Now, what you'll be noticing is that uh, we don't have a entire wall here in this one, like you're seeing in this uh, template. So, but what happens is if I were to just uh, delete this wall, right? In the ground floor, if I go and I delete this wall. Now, the problem is that there won't be any slab created. The slab will not be there. In order for that to be there, we need to create a room somehow, which is usually created by the wall. But here we can use uh, a combination of walls and space divisions. So we can go to floor plan. And what we can do instead is we draw a wall. Let's say this is the wall which is going to support the television. And we simply draw one here, right? Just like a wall that comes in the middle. So this will be acting as our wall. This we can even reduce the thickness if you want. So I'll just be making this 100. And however, that room has not been created yet now. To, in order to, for the room to be acknowledged, you need to make some do something called space dividers. So those are invisible walls. So you go to the walls here, open this drop-down menu, click on room divider, 
and simply draw the room divider click on one point and draw the other to form the room dividing line and you can draw another here as well and if you want them to meet the walls exactly you can click on trim extend first click on the wall it is going to meet and then click on the room divider now it will meet exactly so you don't have to worry about drawing it properly you can do the same for these two as well so now when i do this you can see that in three dimension you can see that the slab has been formed here and when you go to your room and just toggle around you can see that just one part of the wall is there and the rest is created by the room divider so that is actually something that's a very useful tool you can use especially when you're creating things like living rooms or dining rooms which are um, not enclosed rooms as such now what we can do next is uh, we can go through what kind of furniture we have so we'll be dealing with uh, the wall tiling the wall finish and the wall the floor tiling much later on and the ceiling let's just take a look at the furniture that we have so before doing so like i was explaining earlier if you click inside this room and scroll up and you can you should change this type to living room it'll be much easier to for you to find the furniture there you can even rename it if you want and what happens when you change the type to living room is now when you go to furnish you will see that living room furniture and living room accessory has already been shortlisted for you when you open the living room furniture here you'll be seeing the items like shoe rack sofa and tv unit and living room accessory will show you things like plant etc and so instead of selecting all all is also a good way to find all the categories but the most used ones will be narrowed down for you so let's say i'm adding a sofa here in this view right so i'll simply uh, click on sofa and i can choose a nice sectional sofa that i had in mind like for example afi deco and then i can place a sectional sofa anywhere and you can change its uh, dimensions etc like width i just make this 3000 and change this um you can change depth also if you want and of course you can uh, always you can rotate the sofa by pressing the space bar repeatedly or you can rotate it in this angle here so this applies for all of your objects you can even drag the sofa and while dragging uh, if you click on this arrow and you type in a certain number like minus 500 you can see that now the sofa will be shifted that way by minus 500. And similarly, if you just type in 1000 or something, it'll be sh shifted forward by that much. So this is a very quick way of shifting your uh, object. You can do this here as well, but you will have to know the exact coordinate. So this is much easier. Also, you can change the, uh, you can change the meshes or materials of the sofa. If you scroll down, you can see that currently there's some fabric being used, but you can change that. Click on fetch from store against this, and then you can click on, let's say earlier you had to find the exact fabric, the exact uh, category and subcategory. You don't have to do that anymore. You simply need to click on the search bar and type in the name of, type in any keyword. I want to type in something fabric and then I press enter. Or better yet, if I type in blue, then I'll get uh, blue finishes of all types. And then I can just filter it here to be fabric so that you'll get all blue related fabric from which you can select and apply on your sofa. So this doesn't just apply for your uh, sofa furniture, but it applies for every single 3D object and also your uh, cabinetry that you're putting, the finishes. So after putting your sofa, you can also put things like your center table, et cetera. So for that, I'll just go to your furnish. I'll select, uh, we don't have table in this case. So I'll have to scroll down and select the table category 
and you'll have a nice selection of center tables from which you can choose. In this case, I had chosen this uh, simple rectangular one, this keyboard one, but you don't have to choose that. It's up to you. So here, I think uh, you can choose this particular table, like this Alice table. And you can press a space bar to just rotate it. And of course, you can change its dimensions too. And in the, this manner, you can even add things like a side table here. Still, it is still derived from a table. Or you can add a cabinet, and then you can make the necessary changes. But these are some of the 3D models that you have here. Now, supposing you have a SketchUp model or any OBJ file model or et cetera that in your system, and you want to put it in your catalog. So without doing that, without going through the trouble of putting it in your catalog and then loading it, what you can do is you can go to insert here and then click on 3D import. So you can see here that it is accepting OBJ, uh, Blender, GLB, and SketchUp formats. So I suppose I want to put a chair. I'm simply going to put the SKU name. I can type in something like chair. And the replacement will be, where will your chair snap to? You want it to snap to the floor. Then you select upload and i just want to choose a chair or a sofa of my choice so i'll just pick out this one that i've shortlisted select open they may ask you to select put in a material file so i'll be doing that as well and then you select open then you can directly click on import so now this chair can be added this chair has been added directly into your model but it has not been added to your catalog. So this is a very direct way in which you can do this. And of course, you can, similar to the others, you can change the materials of this chair as well. If you wanted to match the sofa, what you can actually do is, uh, you can simply click on the dropper tool against the chair, this material, and then click on the denim and repeat the same for the other as well. And now you can see it has been changed. So I think this one was supposed to be the wooden legs. So I'll just change it to light wood or something, and it'll have changed. So depending on the OBG file or SketchUp model you put in, this uh, you can put one or more materials on that uh, object. In this case, it is covering the full thing. Now, uh, this is about putting the furniture. You can even put several props like, when you go to furnish, you can click on furniture accessory, living room accessory, and a plant. So we have several types of plants as well, like this concrete plant that you can put in here. And you can just keep it on the side of your sofa. Right, and in this way, you can actually uh, click here, and you can put other things as well. Like if I go to, if I go to art, you have some base decorative art that you can actually keep on top of your center tables and such. And afterwards, you can always drag this arrow so that it'll, and it'll snap itself actually to your table. So you don't have to calculate the height at which you need to put it. You can just drag it using the arrow. You can keep a few marble sculptures here as well. And this way you can very quickly and very easily customize your living room. And lastly, if you have put a window here, like a bay window or a balcony here, you can change the type of window by simply clicking on change model for this window. So in this case, I want it to be sliding itself. And then I can change the height of this. I can make it uh, 24,000, 2400, sorry elevation as um, it's just taking some time just one minute
So I'll just reload this page. Yes. So as I was saying, so this window I was editing. So you can do that by, I've changed the height here. You can change the level as well under elevation to be zero. And very similar to what I've done here, I've added two of these doors. So you can add your width to be, let's say, 1,200 here. And if you want, you can go to your flow plan and just drag it here. Uh, press and while pressing alt just click and drag this window and you'll be making a copy of the same so now this is how you can very easily make two windows right and if you want to add a finishing touch you can for your in terms of furniture you can add your a curtain as well and once again you can go to furnish in case you're not quite sure where to find a curtain simply type the name into the search bar so you can use this uh, straight curtain here. You can just keep one here and then press Alt and then just move one over here as well. So now we have these two curtains being used here, right? And now an important part of the whole, th um, this entire uh, living room is the TV unit. So when you, Look for a TV unit. There are two ways you can find one. If you go to Furnish, and if you click on TV unit here, you will be only be seeing the 3D objects of the TV units, but you won't be able to edit uh, its partitions, etc. So one very good way that you can uh, do that is instead of going to TV unit, you can go to multi-purpose miscellane multi-purpose model of furniture and from here select the tv unit ke sub category and then you can choose any of the ones that are available for you if it's not there in your carousel then you can go to admin select catalog furniture multi-purpose model of furniture and then go to tv unit and then select add from warehouse here then you will be able to open uncover various different types of TV units, etc., like this. So these are already available, so you can use them and you can edit them. So I'm just selecting this. And if you want, you can delete the custom panel also later on. Just move this a little back. 
and just shift it in such a way that so this also you can uh, edit certain things because this is a model of furniture now so this you can perhaps delete you can remove this panel so now this it's only this tv the standalone tv along with a the along with the wall unit etc so you can make changes here if you click on this uh, unit and you go to user component there were some your there are some components already set so i'll just uh, in this case this is like tall unit height so i'll just put something like 2000 but in the other one that you put in like if you select the other tv unit you will not have to do that but it's just an example and for this you can just uh, click on the partition or parent partition and you can actually add a shutter system if you want to So you can make various changes like that. And at the panel level, you can add accessories. So here you can, you can change the shutter design. You can change the shutter to normal and then choose an, a fluted shutter. And then you can change its materials. So I've just selected, I've just chosen the exterior to be the exterior shutter material to be like this. And the shutter handle also you can place to be in the right middle. So it's here now. And you can add same similar to this, you can add some inbuilt accessories also. Like see here, if you click inside this partition and you go to the partition tab, in customize, if you go, you can click on other accessories, you can add them. And then you can just type in props or art or something. And then you can actually add this as part of your, like a plate stand, et cetera. It'll actually be placed here. And you can actually make a lot of modifications like this. Just go to furniture light units if you want to uncover the properties of this particular piece of um, art. And then you can change its position, et cetera. Like in Z axis, I'm typing in zero. So that will be shifted back to its place of origin and you can change its size as well so this is an example on how to do how to add uh, tv units and place inbuilt furniture especially if it's a modular unit now there's a bit on how to add the furniture uh, now we'll also be going into how to add wall paneling especially for something like this Let's say this is a wall. Uh, this is just a wall in which some kind of wall paneling has been added. What we can do in this case is uh, we can go to our uh, design and first we give a give this a sort of a finish. So we click here and just click on the surface of the wall. Or another thing we can do is if we click on the surface of the wall, then we won't really be able to uh, change the material of the sides. I'll just try that. If you click on Fetch and Store and uh, Wall Texture, let's say I'm just changing the material here. And I just go to Wall, Advanced Settings. And I'm going to try applying a cross-section material. So if that does not work out, then what you can instead do is go to the wall section, click on the surface, click on tiling and cutting tool. What we'll be doing now is we'll be adding this uh, tiling. It'll be covering this entire wall so that even this side will be having that color. So I'll be going here, I'll be selecting add, and I'll be clicking on rectangle. And what I'll be doing is I'll just drag the extent slightly outside of the wall so that that portion will be thicker than the wall and therefore will have its finish. 
then when I select apply, then I can apply the same material that I wanted to add for the wall like this. And since the wall's depth is 100, I'll need to make this slightly more than that. I'll make this 120. Now what happens is when I go back, this entire tile has been added in front of the wall. I need to shift it backwards. So again, I click here, go to tiling and cutting, and I shift, do a front shift by minus 110, which is thickness of the wall plus 10 more mm. So now what happens is when I go back, now this whole thing is being treated, it looks like it appears as a single wall. So that's one thing. So now, not only is this wall there, but these uh, wooden components were also there. So we can add this also in a similar way. Just simply click on this again, go to tiling and cutting tool, go back to go to add. And now just create rectangles that are slightly outside of the wall. So this will be acting as a wooden components like this. Then you can copy the whole thing. You can just select it. And then you can click on copy. Let's say I want to create uh, two more copies. I click on fixed copy, select type in two, click on the base point, and then just move my mouse in the desired direction. So this is going to be treated as one entity. If I select apply, I can click on save as one entity. Then I just assign this a uh, wooden material here. Not this. Or uh, maybe a lighter wood color like maybe American maple and then when I go back, I need to make this overlap the wall. So once again, what I can do is tiling and cutting tool, click on this, make this thicker than the whole tiling. So I'll make it uh, maybe 160, 160. And then shift it backwards by 130. Now, if that happens, then now you can see that this is what your tiling might look like. And of course, later you can shift this uh, TV set back also, um, like in front of the tiling also. In floor plan, now it'll be easy to do. So you can just drag it here because what you're seeing now is the entirety of the tiling. So when you go to your 3D, so this is how your uh, TV will appear, your TV set will appear. If you want to change the TV, or if you want to add a larger TV, you can simply delete this one. And you can go to your furnish, uh, click on electrical, electric uh, points or something, or you can type in just a TV, standalone TV. Open the category for electronic equipment, and you have the standalone TV. So now you have much larger TV here. So you can just place it at the front like this. And of course, you can drag it upwards. If you don't have this in your castle, once again, you can go to your admin portal. Uh, you can go to your accessories and electronic equipment and go to add from warehouse. And here and normally the standalone TV would be there if you go to electronic equipment. Since I've added all the TVs, it won't be there for me. But for you, it would be there, especially if you have not added them. So this is how you can add your uh, television. This is where you can get it. And in this way, you can add several other uh, types of finishes like this. The rest is quite, uh, fairly simple. So you can just click on your, uh, if you want to change your flooring, just click on your flooring here. Uh, go to tiling pattern. And you can choose the material to be different. 
like if you wanted to match let's say this uh, wall you can do that or you can just choose something else like uh, floor tiles perhaps and to further segregate it i'll just type in white and then i can go for floor tiles and then i can further search for subcategories here if i want only ceramic floor tiles i can choose that i can choose like hue white and then under grout if you want the tiles to be visible you can give assign a non-zero grout line like maybe 2 mm or in this case 5 mm so then the grout line color also you can change right and here and now if you want to assign the same color you can do that just click on this um, dropper click on the floor tile then that doesn't mean it'll get tiled like that it will get the material if you want to apply tiling you need to go to wall tiling and cutting tool and then add the tiling like that and similarly here uh, you can just give this a similar color like you're seeing here and then you can add different wall paneling also like a much simpler one here you can click and go to tiling cutting tool click on add click on rectangle and then select let's say i want to copy this now at any point you can also drag the edges here and then you can copy it so i'll just select copy and if you want to array it, you can. So if this is 991, and I want there to be a, a 40 mm space, so that is 1100. So fixed distance, I'll select and type 1100. And I'll just click on this base point. And now these stylings have been added. I'll just stretch this one and select apply. If you want, you can save it as one entity or multiple entity. For the ease of uh, use, you can save it as one, especially if you're going to assign the same material to all of them, the same properties. And then of course you can choose the material that you feel would look best. And of course I'll just make this 10 mm. I don't want it to be so thick. I'll just close this. And then if you want, you can change the properties as well. So, which means if I go to three dot button here and click on material settings, I don't want these tiles to appear here. So I can stretch it also a little bit. I'll make the width to be 3000 into 3000. Both the dimensions apply to all instances. And now you can see the texture has stretched and become more seamless. So now when I go back to designing, you can see that these panels have been added. Right. And now all I need to do is, you know, create the false ceiling as well. So here I can assign a similar material. And to add a false ceiling, like what you are seeing here, simply go to your false ceiling in the left hand panel, select add, and you can create a rectangle and you can even create your uh, concentric squares and array them. So let's just say I make one cavity like this. Let's say I want one to appear like this. And I want to create a concentric offset. So I click on offset here, select copy, and then I make another square inside. And now if I want to copy this cavity across all the entire length of the room, I simply select only this rectangle so that left from right, left to right, so that only this gets selected. Uh, a copy, a fixed copy, and I just want two copies like this. So I will be clicking on the base point and then clicking on the end point and selecting apply. I'll save this as one entity. And then of course I will change the material here. And if I want a greater depth, like what I'm seeing here, let's say 150, I will be doing that or I can even type in 200. Now going back to the design, now you can see that this false ceiling has been created. Now all you have to do now is go to your insert, select a light, click on light, and you can have a variety of hanging lights from which you can choose. So I'll just 
select this nice ring light here. Or if not that, then something better. Maybe this master bed hanging light. And of course, you can array this as well. So if you don't know how to do that, if you don't know how to uh, where to copy this, simply enable your false ceiling mode by going to the bottom right and clicking on Enable Reflected Ceiling Plan. Now you know exactly where you can put your ceiling light. You can select Alt and you can copy it here and here as well. Another thing that I need to mention was, uh, especially when you are creating a false ceiling and you don't know where the sofa and the other floor plan outlines are as a reference, you can always click on floor outlines in this toolbar. So now if you drag this away, you can see that you can see this as a reference. And if you click on add, then you can in fact add the um, shapes over here. You can add the shapes using this as a reference. Since I've not done that, uh, we can let it be. But just for your reference, you will be able to enable flow plan lines. So that will be much easier for you to design. So I'm going to discard this. And I'm just going to move this back where I moved it from. And then I'll go back to designing. So yes, uh, so in this manner, you can add a lot of uh, accessories like this. Like your lamps also, you can add actually. So apart from what I just showed, when you go to light, you can click on table lamp. And you can choose a nice uh, fan geo or an m, &M And you can place it on your soap, your side table. And of course, you have there is wall art, paintings, and such. You can go to your furnish, select art, paintings, and you have a variety of items to choose from. If you don't, if none of these uh, paintings are to your taste, you can always use tiling and cutting tool and go to tiling and cutting, select add, put in a rectangle, choose offset, like. Select move here. So this will be your frame copy. Sorry, I'll just select this. This will be your first one. Select apply, then add again and create the inside of your like your painting. So if you just want to apply simple material to it, you can do that. So I'm just going to be choosing what has already been used, like this Arjula Chris. And this I'll be giving it a nice black frame. And the front shift. Now, since this has been moved, this is 10 mm thick. I need to shift this also in the front by 10 mm. So front shift is 10 mm here. And I'll be doing the same here as well. So now when I go back, so now this uh, very simple painting has been put in using a fabric of your choice. So you can uh, add in a painting like this into your catalog and actually use that for your uh, wall tiling. So you can actually make wall tiling of your own, wall art of your own. And of course, so, so now this is your um, semi-closed living room. You can add many other things as well, but this is just a glimpse into what you can achieve in creating li a living room. And of course, what is on the other side, you can attach a dining room or a veranda or balcony or et cetera. The, it is up to you. So yes, this brings us to the end of the session. So now the floor will be open. Uh, 15 minutes will be allotted for questions. If you have any questions, please, the floor is open now. All right, I'm assuming nobody has any questions. So yes, I'd like to thank you all, thank all of you for
coming to this simple webinar. So this is just a little bit on customizing your living room. So I hope that it has given you some ideas on what you can achieve and how to access different types of elements, etc., which you can use. So thank you everyone for coming and good evening.